right, I guess I'm, wait a minute, make sure I'm live. Okay, <clears throat> I'll just wait for a second to like at least get one or two people on here. Um, this is a live review of this Black & Decker 15 inch all electric power motor. You don't have to mess with any gas or tune-ups. It's fairly quiet, I've heard anyway, and I got this on sale at about half price on eBay, and how I did that was I spent three whole days making offers on other lawnmowers, you know, I'd say fair offers, not low ball, but just kind of fair offers compared to, because they were returns, open box, things like that. This one is an open box. And um, the way I did this was I just kept, I made like for the pat, like for three whole days straight, I did nothing but offer, offer, offer on three different, like I'd wait one day and then the offer would expire and I'd make an offer on another one, wait one day, that would expire. Another day that offer expired. And then the next day I went, I was looking to make another, to find another one to make another offer on. And I was contacted by this person who I never made an offer to somehow, some way, I don't know how eBay works, but he must've known that I was out there making offers and he knew my price range. So I ended up getting this, uh, I would say it's about, with tax at Home Depot, it's about 130, 140-ish at Home Depot with tax. I actually got this lawn, this brand new open box lawnmower for $75. And by the way, I'm not being paid. This is not a paid thing, but I, I, I didn't even make the offer. He made the offer. He offered me this open box lawnmower for $75. That's with tax. That's with shipping everything out the door. So let's see how it works, by the way. I think I know why they returned it. I think I know why it's an open box. You actually do need to use a wrench like this to get this on because if you don't squeeze these two components together as tight as possible to screw this on, there's no way. And the other thing, you cannot use the, the washers i tried it with the washer there's no way to get that on with the washer you have to remove the washer and use this to squeeze the two handles together tightly and then you have to oh then you use you can use your hand to screw on the plastic knobs that are sticking on the side and also you will need this a screwdriver to get the screws in down here which can be a little difficult. I'd still have to work on this side. That side went in easier. I will have to spend some time to work on that to get it all the way to go in, but that's another story. I want to see how this works. I'm not going to do my whole one. I'm just going to do part of it and then I'll let you know. And I'm, by the way, I'm sweating. It's like 85 degrees. I got, I got this bandana on, so I'm dripping sweat right now. I got goggles, which are actually, they're actually uh, fogged up now, darn it. I don't want anything going into my eyes. Um, you don't know, like there's stray animals running around constantly, you know, and I don't want any parasites getting in my eyes because that is a problem. People don't realize it, but it is, it's a huge issue. Um, I think the whole pet industry is out of control. There's just way too many dogs and cats running around um, that's another topic, I know, but, um, yeah, I can't see out of these. Um, I do have some gloves clean, just took these out of the clean laundry thing, even though they're, they don't look clean, they are. I don't have any defogger, by the way, so, okay, hopefully they don't get too fogged up too quick. I'm just going to do a little bit of this lawn and let you guys know you can listen it seems to be quiet i just turned it on just for a second just to make sure you know i wasn't gonna like do this live stream and then all of a sudden it didn't turn on i did just for a second so oh now i got my gloves on wrong it is really hot out here like i said it, it's 85 in the shade i don't know how hot it's gonna be out here so i just have my gloves on a second ago and here they are Alrighty, let's see how this goes. Oh, by the way, these two things, I don't know what they're, I think they're to hold the cord up, but I didn't put that cord thing on. 
I don't know where it goes, but I use, I mean, right now I'm using a closed head so these things don't slide all the way down and, and hit the wheel or anything. So I don't know if you could see that. Anyway. I almost forgot. Again, I don't want anything going into my eyes or mouth or nose because cats do carry the you know what and yeah you can look that up i'm not making this shit up
It is full, as you can see. And I did about a quarter. <sighs> about a quarter of my lawn. So I'm going to get some water and I'm going to dump that into the corn. What will be patch, not a corn patch yet, but it will be. And oh, what a workout. Who needs an exercise gym when you have a lawn to mow? Oh. Anyway, I would say that's worth every penny. I paid, again, $75. On eBay, the way I got such a good deal, I don't know who this person was. I don't know like how they knew I was making offers, but somehow they knew, and that's great because he's like, offer $75 for this lawnmower. I never made him an offer ever. I made other people offers. So um, I was making offers. There was this one, Greenworks. I made a $90 offer on that because it was open box and the mulch mulcher was missing they had no mulcher to it i don't know if this one has a mulcher or not i didn't read to see if it's supposed to come with one but that's okay because as you saw when i opened the bag it, the grass looked pretty well cut to me i think that's good enough it doesn't need to be any more than that um i i love this lawn more it's quiet you can use it with one hand when it was easy to push um I do, again, I need to empty that. So I got about a quarter of my lawn done. I'll probably need to empty the bag two more times before I'm finished, which is great because I'll have plenty of grass clippings for my bed to start my bed with. And um, the box uh, was a little damaged and there was a few scratches on the lawnmower, but who cares? It works. That's all that matters. And if I can save 65 bucks, hell yeah, I'm going to buy one open box on, on EV. Are you kidding me? Um, okay. Let's see. Yeah. Quiet crowd house, Texas. Yeah. Everything's hot here. Good. It's like, I love 85 in the shade. It's just 85 in the sun when you're mowing a lawn is a little too much, but that's okay. I need, I should take breaks. Hold on. I got to get some water and wash my hands. Oh, in the freezer it's an empty kombucha bottle I just take the label off it's glass and I reuse these for my water and this is purified water from a dispensary that I get in these large three gallons that are you know reusable plastics that aren't the um you know the the ones that have the the residues You say Black & Decker is better than, I imagine so, because Black & Decker, I mean, everyone knows that name, right? And you get those at Home Depot. I mean, I guess Greenworks, maybe you can get those at Home Depot. I, did, I didn't look, but no one's really, I mean, I've never heard of Greenworks, really. But yeah, Black & Decker is like an everyday, they make all kinds of different, not just lawnmower, but, you know, products. I'm really happy with it. I'm so glad because, you know, I was looking at his his ad, but the reason I didn't make an offer on his, and I'm glad I didn't because if I had, I would have actually ended up spending more money because I was thinking about making him an offer for $90 because originally he was asking like $120 or something. Um, but the reason I didn't was because there was no photo. And I really wanted to get the more expensive Black & Decker one with, with the bar across. 
not the two handles, but you know what? I don't mind because the reason I was thinking I didn't want th that one, I was thinking that I couldn't let go of one, like it would turn off, but you can actually let go of one handle and use just one hand. So that's great. That's why I, I didn't really want that one, but it's fine. It works with one hand only. And again, the reason I believe it's an open box and whoever bought it took, shipped it back to, to um, wherever they shipped it back to was because the thing, the screws that hold the handle onto the other handle, they had they come with a washer and there's no way you're going to get that screw all the way in with those washers. You, it won't will not hold. So I end up taking the washer off and then I tried it again and I still couldn't get the screw on. What you have to do is you have to get pliers and you have to squeeze the two bars together, the one that's already attached and the one you put on, you squeeze those as tight as you can because otherwise it's gonna be like this and there's no way you're gonna get that screw in there. You have to squeeze them like that together. That's the only way and I think that's the only reason why they shipped it back, it's not used. It's open box, someone tried to put it together, they gave up and they shipped it, but they just got frustrated with it, I could tell. Because even if you did, Use a wrench to squeeze those two bars together. There's no way you're going to get that with the with those washers on there. I don't know why those washers are even on there. No reason, because it makes the screw like way too short. You were snipped by a dog. That well, you better be careful. Don't have rabies because. You know, in, in India and other third world countries, I say, I know we're not a third world country yet, but I would be scared that you never know if the owner vaccinated the damn thing or not. And even then you still don't know. You don't know, like, do you really trust it that much that it's gonna work? That's not hundred percent. You could still get rabies. And that's a horrible, horrible way to die. And especially if you can't find a doctor, right? Which who knows? I'm, I've not had any colds or anything this past year, and I'm so glad because, you know, I'd be terrified to go to the doctor right now. You're in an enclosed space, and no, no ventilation, probably no air purification. You're face-to-face -face with someone who comes face-to-face -face with people every day that's sick. You know, I'd be terrified to go to a doctor right now. That's the other reason I stay away from everyone. I'm not that thirsty, but I'm sweating a lot and I don't want to get dehydrated. I'm just, I'm kind of like forcing myself really. I'm not thirsty at all. I actually had a late breakfast today. I didn't get, even get hungry until like I woke up at like 10 o'clock, did my gardening stuff, wasn't hungry at all. One o'clock rolls around so fast. It's like the day just goes by like so quick. I still wasn't really hungry, but I just kind of like, well, you know, I don't want to go all day without eating, but even though I could, there's no reason why I couldn't, but I just went ahead and had my bone marrow French toast with my mushroom coffee with my collagen and other um, antioxidants and stuff. And um, yeah, I just ate one piece and I'm not nowhere near hungry and or thirsty. Your face is beat. Well, I wouldn't say it's that red. It's but I've been molting like crazy. I don't know why the past couple days. No reason. You know, my skin on my face has just been shedding like crazy. So I actually have this razor that I use. I know it sounds crazy. A razor on your face. Yeah, a razor on my face. It's called dermaplaning. Hello. Oh, but you know what? I don't go to a dermatologist and spend hundreds of dollars to have my my face dermaplaned. I just do it myself. So I dermaplaned twice in the past. And I know you're not supposed to do it that often. I'm not doing it no more. But the day before yesterday, it was really bad, like dead skin everywhere on my whole face. I don't know why. It just happens. That's natural. 
So it's, you know, change of seasons, getting more sun, I guess. I don't know, but I dermaplaned. I used my, um, what's it called? It's for after treatment care. Um, it's a really, really high end product that you use for like after microneedling. I don't microneedle by the way, I dermaplane. So, um, I, it's like a high end care product that you can put it on right after microneedling. It doesn't burn. So I use that ointment. Um, you get from a like, you know, high end dermatologist or whatever. I actually bought this one online. You can get online too. And I use that. And then the next morning yesterday I, I woke up and I felt, and I could still feel some dead skin. I didn't get all of it off. So I, again, I might did a really light, much lighter microplane and then I got rid of all the dead skin. So now this is the results. I'm pink. What can you do? And by the way, I do use sunscreen. I applied, um, not just coconut. This is like only $1, but first I put the coconut oil. I did this twice today. I did it once in the morning, put the coconut oil on. Then I put this mineral, this, I know this isn't for your face, but if you use the coconut oil, you can actually get away with using this on your face. Otherwise, if you don't use anything before you use this, it goes on like really, really like thick. And um, I'll show you. I am sweating. But after I um, do my gardening in the morning, well, first I, okay, I do the, this right with the coconut oil I garden I come back in I'm sweating so then I dry my face and I reapply again so this is like one dollar organic coconut you get this at like see organic you can get this at the 99 cent store I did wash my hands by the way and I was wearing gloves but this will um, help the Cause see, I normally do get sunscreen that's just for the face, but I couldn't resist a sale. Like when you, when you see something on sale on eBay, you're like, okay, you know, I'd rather spend five bucks uh, other than, you know, $20 for something else. It's almost the same, right? So this is normally I would get this one, this mineral fusion, because you can put this right on your face without any coconut oil. It's got shea butter in it. But this is like 20 bucks on eBay and I couldn't find any on sale. I got this one on sale and it's, it's organic too. And it's fragrance free, sensitive, but I don't think it's for the face. It could be, but anyway, I have to do the coconut oil first and then this will go on. So just depending on how much I'm sweating, I might apply this up to like four times a day, like every few hours if I'm sweating a lot. But yeah, I need to go and dump those um, grass clippings after this and then finish the lawn up. And um, I'm going to go buy some corn seeds probably either tomorrow morning, like early and early before the crowds get to the store. I always check Google maps. You know, I, I go online, I'll Google home Depot, you know, it, it might automatically comes up in my area. I go to the map. I click on the one that's closest. Their thing comes up. I scroll down and it will show like how busy it is and it works. You know, usually if it says not too busy, that's usually good. Sometimes it'll say a little busy and it won't be busy at all. And sometimes it'll say a little busy and it'll be too busy. But usually if you go early enough, it's usually not too busy, especially like Sunday morning. Sunday morning, Tuesday morning, you know, any time during the week early enough usually is good time to go. Early meaning like before 10, I guess. Or before 11. If you get there like 11, I guess that's okay. But I'll mostly just be at the outdoor area. I just want to get some strawberry starts if they have any. Home Depot has been terrible lately. Like they don't have any starters, like edible starters. I think what happened was because of the freak cold blizzard that blew through South Texas, a lot of their stuff got dot killed, right? So now they're just being assholes about it and they refuse to start any more plants. That's my theory. I don't know if it's true. I, that's what I'm thinking because they should have 
and they didn't have the lettuce starts and it's not that late in the season to start, you know, to have lettuce starts. So I had to go buy some starters on um, Walmart and I wish I hadn't because I feel like I got ripped off. They just shoved those things in the box and they broke off the leaves and now these poor plants are in shock and I don't even know if they're going to even make it. They look horrible right now. They're like all wilted and broken. So I feel like I, like somebody just did not take any care in these things whatsoever. And they just shoved them in the box and broke the leaves off. And those poor things are, they're, all, they're living things. Okay. You can't treat them like that. As you know, if you may or may not notice, I always put my products on in an upward motion. And I do think it helps. You know, any little thing you can do that helps, you know, to properly handle your skin. A lot of people just, you know, do this and they pull and they're, and what they're doing is they're tugging downward on their skin, you know. Now, tugging on your skin is good if you want skin where you don't have skin. You know what I mean? To protect something that needs protection because it's sensitive and it should be even more sensitive. But you know what I mean? Well, maybe you do. But I mean, tugging on your skin is good if you want to make your skin grow. But if you don't want your skin like on your face to grow because you don't want skin that's hanging because it's not really supposed to like you have nothing on your face, you know, to, to that you would want skin to hang over. Right. Because your your face is like a, an a, it's skin. It's an organ. But it's an external, your skin is ex, an external organ, not an internal down there organ. So yeah, big difference. And I wish I didn't even have to say that, you know, like I wish that we, we didn't live in such a barbaric, how did I ever get on this topic? I don't know. How, I wish we didn't live in such a barbaric society, the U.S., you know what I mean? They harvest basically what they're doing is they're harvesting organs from infants the, the skin is an organ okay and they're harvesting skin from infants males usually and they're selling that uh for whatever reason but they don't need to because they could get skin from donors okay o organ donor skin they don't need to use infant skin. And th to me, that's as bad as what China, you know, people are always saying, oh, China's, you know, they, they do live like organ harvesting. Well, hello, the U.S. does it too. Only they do it to infants that can't speak out. And most males aren't going to say nothing because it would be too traumatizing for them to come to terms with that fact. Hello, they'd have to get counseling, you know, because it's too traumatizing to come to terms with that fact. Hello, it's an organ, your skin. Yeah, you're born perfect. Yeah, you don't need mutilation down there. It's not necessary. It's a self-cleaning organ, a self-protecting organ. Hello. Oh, man. The stupidity. I wish I didn't have to talk about this shit. The stupidity of it all. Did I shock anyone? You were snipped by a dog. Yeah, you were probably snipped by someone else with a white coat on when you're an infant. Actually, it's more than snipping. It's more like ripping and tearing. I have almost perfect skin. Thank you. Well, I don't know what you mean by almost perfect. I mean, I'd say it's pretty damn good for my age, really. I'd say it's really, it's perfect for my age. The only thing I wish I hadn't done is a long time ago, I had um, liposuction done under here and I wish I hadn't because now that I'm getting older, I realize that you need, you kind of need your fat under here because if you don't have fat under your chin it, the um neck lines will show up more like these vertical ones the patismal bands i think that's from lack of fat and yeah 
I wish I hadn't had that removed the fat. I used to have more fat under here. I don't know. I think like back then they, they didn't have stuff like um, injectables like that to melt the fat. I think that would have been a better option for me because I didn't have a whole lot of fat under here. But I've actually thought about getting the injectable like done right and through here because I have a little bit of fat right here. Um, but I'm going to wait because they don't have anything that good yet. It's not really meant for it. The injectables are more for like meant for under here. And I wouldn't go and get any procedures done anyway right now because of the, you know, what's going on. I, I'm afraid to be that close to someone. See, I, I would prefer to get some kind of fat dissolver. I don't know. Right, right. Just a tiny, tiny bit. I'm, I know I'm probably nitpicking, but you know, um, yeah, whatever. It looks worse on camera because the camera adds 10 pounds. Okay. It looks, believe me, it looks worse on camera than it really, what it does. Anyway, I think I did enough of this. Oh, okay. Anyone have anything to say? No, I'm uh, much older than 30s, much more, like almost twice the, as old as 30s, believe. I don't like talking about my age, but like mentally or in my mind, I'm really ageless. Like I'm an adult, but age is just like an arbitrary thing that we make up in our heads. And I don't know how else to put it really. I can see the little blackbirds out there right now and they're coming in eating the bugs and they're, and they're it's so cute. They're picking up little sticks where I just mowed the lawn. It's so cute. I don't know if you can see them. Oh, they're so cute. They're, they're picking up stick, little like grass clippings and stuff for their nests. How cute. I don't know if you can see them. You probably can't see. It's too bright. I still I need to do towels today. <sighs> Anyone have anything to say? I think you a lot of you are probably in shock from what I just talked about. Again, I wish I didn't have to say anything. I'm just like super aware and I can project my mind back and forth in time and feel the atrocities of it all and realize that we really aren't any more civilized than we were hundreds of years ago. We're the same. And because, well, I shouldn't say we, because I can't speak for everyone, right? But realistically, our brains are the same as they were a thousand years ago, our brains have not gotten bigger that we haven't gotten, you know, grown more brain power. Not really. Um, it's the mentality it's, that, that's there is it has not changed. It's the mentality, I would say. We regurgitate more than we actually think out of the box. I shouldn't again, I shouldn't say we but you know, I can't speak for everyone. I try to question and I try not to either mentally or physically regurgitate anything I do. I both mentally and physically question everything that I do. I don't just mindlessly go through life not thinking about details of what I think or what I do. I think if we are to ever evolve, that's the only way that we ever will evolve. Uh, I would like to say also technology and um, AI, but that's very controversial because there are, oh, let's just say people, possibly governments and things, religious organizations and others that 
would like to get control over um, technology, and that's not a good thing. I don't trust governments. I don't trust organizations. And um, let's just leave it at that. Um, Yeah, well, I don't even have a smartphone, so no one's going to track or trace me. And you know what? <laughs> I uh, I don't even take my phone anymore when I go to the store. What 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 for? The store is just right here. I don't have to have my phone on me. It's better to be safe than sorry, right? I mean, who knows what's going to happen? Um. Hopefully nothing, okay? Hopefully nothing happens, but you never know. You never know. Oh, man. There's this fly in my house, and it's been driving me crazy. I can't, I've tried twice to get the thing. You know, I don't like flies in my house because they, they land on all kinds of crap outside. And then when they come in the house, you don't know where they've landed. And like I said, um, you know, the, the whole pet industry, the whole pet population thing is just out of control around here. I found scat out in my yard today. It was disgusting. I had to dig it up, you know, because if you just take it off the surface, I think it was cat. It has to be cat scat. If you just take it off the surface, there's still left behind microbes and eggs and worms on the ground. So I had to like actually take a bunch of soil out with it and put it in my trash can, which I cringe at even just the thought of it. It's disgusting. You know, what right does anyone have letting their cats out to go, you know, crap in your yard? Like who has, why do they seem, why do people think to seem, seem to think they have that right yet? They, they do it and there's nothing you can do. You know, you just have to pick it up. And I almost stepped in it. If I would have stepped in it, I would have had to throw my shoes away, you know, because there's no way I'm I'm going to scrape cat shit off my shoes. That's just horrible. They carry all kinds of viruses and microbes and brain amoebas and all kinds of shit, mind control garbage that make you stupid. Because they are they are so ugh, just they don't they're not part of nature. They're cats and dogs or something humans created. They're monsters that humans bred and mutated and created out of something that to be a prisoner, you know, it's like humans, they, they're so like needy of something that they can control and have under their power, you know, and it's ridiculous. It just creates filth in the environment and it, it throws the ecosystem way out of whack. So it's like now we, we have less birds than we should have. If we had, you know, no cats, we would have tons more birds. Like, I should have all kinds of birds, you know, coming around all the time and I don't have nearly enough. Today I was out doing some gardening and I saw a moth and I thought to myself, if we just had more birds, I would never see these moths and bugs, you know. No, I don't think we should cage any animal. I don't even think we should have zoos or aquariums. I think all animals should be left in the free, in the wild. It's cruel. It's cruel to have an animal in captivity. Now, when you're a child, you don't understand that. Like I had horny toads when I was a child. I had lizards. I had, you know, all kinds of reptiles, frogs. I loved frogs. I used to go out and capture, cat, catch the wild frogs, bullfrogs, and have them in an aquarium. And, and you know, when you're a child, you don't you don't understand that that's not the right thing to do, that you need to enjoy nature out in nature. And it's actually I actually think it's a perversion to actually touch and pet an animal, because to me, to me, that petting it to me is an intimate thing you do with someone you care for and you love like your partner. Right. Petting is like an intimate thing. But to sit there and and handle and fondle an animal, even if it is just on the head, you're picking up all kinds of bacteria, germs, microbes, you're actually collecting the biofilm from your animal 
and then it's on your hand and then you touch your food, you eat it, you touch yourself. Unless you're like a germaphobe and you go run and wash your hands every time you touch your animal. But I don't think people ever like would ever even think about washing their hands after they touch their dust, disgustingly dirty micro filled, filled pet, what they call a pet, you know, which actually means to pet, which is like an actual intimate act you do with a loved one, not a, a disgusting animal. Okay. Do I think there are too many people on this planet? Do you think we have enough uh, oil to supply an ever growing, exponentially growing population is the question. Myself, I don't think we have enough oil in the ground for an infinite amount, an infinite use, uh, exponentially growing use, because even if we did, our whole planet would be filled with oil refineries, okay? We can't exponentially grow oil refineries to exponentially produce oil. And even if we could, we don't have enough oil to do that with. So does that answer your question? Unless you wanna live like a, an animal in a cave somewhere, or we can't, as humans, we can't go back to living in caves. We've lost our ability to do that. And not only that, but we have an ice age coming in about 30 years. Hello. It doesn't just happen overnight. You know, we're going to have weird weather, you know, up until, you know, the, the 2050s. And by then we'll probably all be dead unless you have enough money to pay your way into South America, to the equator. If you have enough money to buy your way into the South equator. But, you know, even that's going to be sketchy because who knows? Nobody knows. Nobody has lived through an ice age. We went through a bottleneck before in the last ice age and we only had a few thousand humans left on earth back then. So you might as well enjoy it while it lasts, but until then, ride the slide. And yeah, there is something called the, what I call the overpopulation poverty cliff. And that's where you have a growing population pushing off the, the poor middle class, it's a cliff that you're going to fall off of and only the very, very wealthy. And then it's going to become like wealthy, poor. You see these mega cities where you have wealthy and you have people living like in tents, like homeless. It's going to be like that. Do you want to live like that? I don't want to live on, on the street in a tent. But you know what? The wealthy aren't going to allow the poor or middle class to take their resources. So they have to live like poor people. Hello. Well, if you live in a castle, you probably don't have any windows, uh, no glass. Ca castles didn't have glass. And actually, castles weren't even like built during any ice age. There might have been a mini ice age, but there was no like thousand year long ice age, not in, in our recent history or our recent literature or memory or history. Because I don't even think we were really quite human then, really. Well, I wouldn't want to be in the cabin in the woods if we start getting more harsher, you know, um, blizzards and, and stuff like that. You get like snowed in or something or your roof could collapse. It's one of the reasons I wanted to move to a southern climate because I don't want like, you know, five foot of snow piling up on my roof. You know, 
you're talking about solar panels, but those solar panels take a huge amount, amount of fossil fuels to manufacture. So really, I don't even think it's a net energy. I think it's uh, it's a scam. It's a it's a, a gimmick. I think solar panels are basically a, now, you know, you could get these little solar ovens. I think those are great if you don't like want to if you have all day to cook something outside, you know. But as far as putting them on your roof, I think it's a gimmick. I I personally think it's a gimmick because it takes so much fossil fuels to manufacture those things. It's crazy. And then you got these heavy panels on your roof. You know, now if they had like some kind of new technology where like it's a film you could just put over all your glass, that would be great. But these big, thick, heavy solar panels, I don't buy that into that crap. I have a very low energy bill anyway, because I don't like just turn lights on for no reason. At night, they're usually all off. And I, I got some installation, new installation put in. And since I've had installation put in, I haven't used nothing other than at night, a window fan. That's it. I think solar or electric cars are a gimmick too. Again, look into all the resources, you know, uh, precious, you know, what do you call mineral, whatever they call those, what do they call those? Uh, earth, you know, very finite, precious earth minerals that they have to use, that they have to get from China. I think it's a gimmick. <sighs> And all the fossil fuels that go into electric cars, it's, it's a huge gimmick. I mean, I barely drive. Like, I, I have everything around me I can pretty much walk to, except for Home Depot. I have to drive there, but... And if the banks would just open up, completely open up, I wouldn't even have to drive to a bank because I have banks I can walk to. But, you know, as it is, I have to drive because the ones I have accounts for, I have to drive to. If they Because they closed all the walk walk-in ones. I don't know when they're ever going to open around here. But if it weren't for that, I wouldn't have to use a car at all, except for if I want to go curbside, which I like. I prefer curbside, actually. But again, I have everything like within walking distance around here, except for those two things I just mentioned. Anyway, I love my electric mower. Um, I use have to you have to use one of those really heavy, heavy, thick, heavy duty cords. Or they cost I think it's over I forget what I paid, but. Those cords are about $100 or more. They're the heavy, heavy duty ones. Not the thin, If you get the thinner one, it'll burn out your motor. Um, but I already had the cord because when I moved from Colorado, I already brought that one with me. And I couldn't fit my lawnmower that I had in Colorado. And it was a piece of junk anyway. I think I only paid like 90 bucks for that one. It was new. It was a little tiny green one. I forget the, the brand name, but I did not like that one anyway. It was really hard to push. And um, the bag filled up. It had a smaller bag capacity, and it filled up super quick. I love this bag because I did almost half my lawn, and it's full now. So I can use it like that, not have to empty it every five seconds. But, yeah, you want to get one with a large bag, and I, I'm happy with this bag capacity. But yeah, I need to go get this fly out of my house and I need to finish doing my yard work. And yeah, I guess that's it for now. Take care.